So, um, and apparently, apparently he has some very funny slides. He was challenged uh, to use some uh, funny is available. Okay. Well, let's let's see what those are like. So, we'll take him three weeks off. Excellent. Nice. All right. That's the title of the talk. Spider Rope. Who am I? I'm Tom Carlos Williams. Uh, almost nobody apparently I've discovered in the last uh, 24 hours knows my real name. Everyone just knows me as Dead Geeks, so that's probably a better way to um, introduce myself. I am Dead Geeks. Uh, I do a code of committer and I do a lot of work in the phone app channel and helping users. So, what is Spider Rope? Spider Rope is 100% private, zero knowledge, online backup seeking and sharing service. What does that mean? It's, uh, well, it's obviously it's backup saying the chart, but um, it's zero knowledge privacy, which means that the actual files and data you send to the server to be backed up are encrypted. They're encrypted on your device before they're sent, so that um, Spider itself has no knowledge of your data, um, not even the names of the files that you sent. Nothing but encrypted blobs. So, even if, you know, asked for that data by someone, uh, we couldn't trick them, even if we wanted to. Um, so I joined the team to work on the mobile client. Um, and my brief was to be a cross-platform phone gap app, uh, initially iOS and then Android. Um, it had to be performable. It, it, it couldn't have been more adamant about that. Um, it could not be something it must write on native, even if I had to use you know, higher to its nth degree and do plugins just to do UI. They, they wanted it to be fast. Um, and also, they wanted it to look as native as possible. Um, I have a caveat there. I argue against that, but I lost. So, we'll get to that later. But, that was the brief. The other part of the brief, which is my favorite part of the brief, is it had to be open source. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, Dan yeah, Tomko said, we were open source on day one. Our first commit was open. At no time was it ever closed before it was dropped on the GitHub. It was an empty repo and then we started adding stuff to it. So it's been open from the start. We'd love anybody to come and have a look at it and contribute to it if you have an interest in that kind of thing. So it's open source. Um, and it's Greenfield's project in a way because they attempted to do something and it hadn't worked out as well as they hoped. So I was able to come in and Dictate <laughs> the tooling. So uh, right from the beginning, we were using the code of, code of a CLI that we were just hearing about from Michael earlier. Um, grunt for build, uh, backbone for the, um, the application, and being careful about testing right from day one. Um, and the tooling mattered because it mattered to me because I wanted the app to be easy to work on, not just for us, but because it's open source, we wanted it to be easy for someone else to drop in and have a play with and contribute. So, um, we started out trying to pick which UI framework to use in order to satisfy this brief. We wanted it to look native on both Android and iOS. Um, Kendo UI, I really like, but it's a commercial license and it's an open source product. So it was just started immediately for that reason. Um, Chocolate Tip UI is a great idea. Um, it's fairly performant, but it just it just didn't it wasn't quite ready, especially on Android. And Bootstrap obviously was discarded for being not native before. Um, so in the end, I chose JQ Touch. I've used JQ Touch in the past for projects and been really happy with it, um, particularly on iOS. But I've done an Android project on it, and I skinned it to look native on Android. And I was very happy with how easy that was to do in the particular project. So I believed. I honestly believed I could just skid it over the top when we did Android later on, and it would be okay. So I just we charged forward and started to take touch on the iOS version of the app. And then about two weeks later, we changed our minds and decided to switch to Android instead. Because we already had this stock app native app that was going to hold us over until we were ready. So they figured they already had something on iOS, they better have something on Android. So we decided to switch to the thing. And it turned out that Somewhere between the last time I had done it and now, JQ Touch had done something crazy and it was completely unusable on Android, unfortunately. So, I did that. So, so somewhere along the way, we as 
developers, I think, especially web developers, I feel like we've lost our way. I personally like to bootstrap for being quite good at what it does, but it's become far too easy just to drop something in instead of hand coding every pixel, right? I mean, in the old days, like I, I'm quite old, but they, we used to, you know, take up one pixel clear GIF and push it every single pixel where we wanted it exactly, right? We spent hours figuring out that shit and take it, right? And now, mobile developers are coming along and just, if they can't just download something that'll make your app look how they want, they give up and move on to something else. And I feel like we've lost our way. But when you like, I, I think it's like for a group staff, I think it's a good job for web of doing that, but it made it hard for people to think that wasn't easy enough to do on mobile, but it isn't. Um, so to borrow one from a great speaker called Matt Wolf, we decided just to make it. The idea being that you build the app for the app, you start from scratch, you do it the right way, you're careful with every pixel, you're careful with every CSS query, you make sure it's how you want it to be. Um, I gave myself one week to see if I could get the new UI built from scratch in CSS as good as the one that we already had for iOS in JK time. <clears throat> Turned out to be heaps easier than I had in my head. In my head, I had all this fear built up about, you know, what, where would I start? You know, I've got to build this thing from scratch, what would I, what would I do? But it turned out to be heaps easier than I thought. Um, and I encourage anybody who's building a phone app to seriously consider starting from scratch, or at least using something like Topic that really cares about performance and CSS. Um, so then it came down to the cross-platform concerns of wanting to be available for multiple platforms versus wanting to try to look native. So <clears throat> for that, it, luckily, Google recently changed um, the look, you know, for four, of course, for the action bar. And um, in, you know, typical, uh, we don't want to admit, we now have a back button, they called it something else. But um, basically, they have a back button now. So you can, they also have this concept for the slide menu of, a, you know, an up button when you get to the end. So I took that and I basically skinned both the back button and the menu button to look the same so that it looked native but without, you know, compromising the navigation expectations of Android. Um, but I was very careful at the time not to make any design decisions that would impact when we changed over to iOS. Like with an action bar, you have you know multiple buttons at the top, and make sure to keep that to just one so it wouldn't look ridiculous in a UI navigation bar look in iOS. Um, so what were the challenges we faced doing this? Um, <laughs> one of the biggest was trying to had uh, is well we're back up in the same app, right? So one of the things you can do is you can actually store files on your device as a favorite, you can view them offline, as well as you know, update them. And these, in the, we had a previous native app that stored these in SQLite database. So I had to build a first time run check that would actually pull through this database and convert them into what we were used to. But the biggest challenge was constantly trying to remember not to misspell the word favorites. <laughs> I'm from Australia, so it was a struggle every time I checked the word. But the real challenge is scrolling. Again, the cut from my goal, scrolling is the enemy. If you can green filter designs and you don't have to do scrolling, you will be happier and you will have more hair. Um, we unfortunately get a file system view, and sooner or later we have to scroll. Um, it's great on Android 4 and on iOS because of you know, CSS scrolling, the flow of scrolling and touch, but on Android 2 we had to fall back to high scroll, and that's a shame because unfortunately it still doesn't have the performance that you want. Um, but uh, the other problem is what's called the uncanny valley, and this is where uh, um, it, it's a con it's concept from robotics where as a robot looks more and more like a human, we have more affinity with the robot. So we like it up to a point. At a certain point, it starts to look creepy because it's human but not quite. So it's just that like this lovely mother and daughter here that are just a little bit disturbing. So, it, the concept of well, how it applies to UI is that if you're creating a UI, you're trying to mimic the native environment and you don't get it right. Because that little bit off, it can be really off-putting 
Whereas if you started from scratch, you did something that was totally different, but still, you know, maintained the paradigms of mobile and understood the practice of mobile and really didn't expect one of that to happen. But you didn't try to fake native, you wouldn't fall into some kind of valley. Um, and this is the result for Spider Oak in the case. So um, I did try to fake native. <laughs> so hopefully it, it isn't too bad and we don't fall into that valley. But um, I certainly will uh, assure you that I will not be trying to fake iOS 7. For obvious reasons, the translucency and HTML5 will not be friends. So, our first consideration then, of course, is performance, right? So, performance is consideration. There's a few things you can make sure of to make sure that your app performs how you want it to perform. Um, first one is always use hardware acceleration for um, animation. jQuery has this concept of an animate command that uses CSS attributes, but it, just, it does a set interval. Changing them constantly, so it's constantly refilling the DOM for every change, and it can be just an absolute killer on mobile. So avoid that wherever possible. Try to use CSS transitions if you can. Um, there's also libraries, even if you're using jQuery mobile, or not just mobile, but jQuery, and you're using Animate, that will actually rewrite Animate and turn it into a CSS transition if you can. Um, use hardware acceleration sparingly. A lot of people talk about getting performance out of mobile apps by pushing uh, your DOM elements onto the GPU. That can be good, but if you get too many of them on there, you quickly run out of GPU memory and you start getting more janky and glitching and your app starts freaking out. And of course, the other thing, especially in Android, is you have to be very careful about DOM structures, box shadows, and um, heavy gradients. They can really slow things down, particularly if you're stuck using eye scroll or something like that for scrolling. The, um, the gradients and the box shadows will absolutely destroy the smooth scrolling from eye scroll. So what's the future for Spider? Um, the next thing I'm still going to be doing is doing the iOS version. Uh, like I said, trying to get the UI so that it's happy in iOS 7 but without trying to mimic it. I always said that and get fallen in that valley. Um, Windows 1.8, of course, uh, lovely sponsors. <laughs> we tried to do Windows 8 version next and BlackBerry 10, but the very next step after that will be the desktop. We're going to try to move our desktop client into HTML5 as well. Um, we'll be doing that through a, an open source project called Krypton, which we're doing, which uses uh, JavaScript for Krypton. 